The last thing we did before going to Le Mans was one final sim test. This was the last step of the preparation, basically the end of the road to Le Mans. The last four years we did everything we could to prepare Michael in the best way possible. We did multiple races, spent hours and hours analyzing his laps. He jumped into a car a million times, did countless pit stops. We traveled around the world for four years and learned all these different circuits. Had setbacks. We did different car control trainings. Michael spent time in his own simulator, took part in cup races, took his own cup car out on the track. He prepared physically and mentally. We lost races and had successful races. In the end, it is all experience. And we always knew it's the most important thing to gain as much experience within the four years of our journey. Experience that will help him on the biggest stage possible. Oh, sorry, bro. And now, it's finally time to go. It's time to go to the biggest race in the world, the 24 hours of Le Mans. I landed in Paris, obviously. Basti picked me up at the airport. I think it was the, the Thursday, so we're still 10 days out from the race. I usually pack my bags in like 20 minutes because I just yeah, bring this, bring that, away we go. And I think I repacked my bag like 10 times. Personally, I felt different leaving because I, I knew that I was like, okay, you know, this, this is it. This is what we've been waiting for. You know, in my head, I was like, I thought Le Mans was like a little village with like two houses and then just a random racetrack. And I'm like, no, no, this is a city. <laughs> this is a whole city. I think that kind of made me realize like also how, how big everything was. Well, I had the drive up from Biarritz to Le Mans. Nice way to go into the big race. Good. How was the drive? Long. Eight and a half hours or something. Arrived at the MMA center, picked up our credentials, and then came straight to the track room. I'm trying not to fall in love. I think the first time it really started to creep up in our minds what was going on was when we arrived at the track for the first time. Here we go. Holy shit. Wow. We're back. Oh yes. This time for the fucking real event. We gotta take a picture now. This is like the, we fucking made it. Chief, how are you doing, man? Yeah, oh, Matty. What's up, mate? How are you? I'm Matt Campbell uh, from Australia, 27 years old and uh, currently a Porsche factory driver. At some point we knew that Richie is going to join the works team for Le Mans and that he's not going to be part of our team. So we also knew that we need somebody um, in the gold or platinum seat that has some sort of experience here in Le Mans. I think uh, Matt has shown his, his talent in several races uh, years ago and also from the character he will fit to Michael and Zack. Not only a very fast young guy, but also a very nice guy um, that brings all the different aspects that we are looking for. So um, for us, he was the perfect, perfect match for the team. Yeah, Le Mans is a very special place. Uh, you know, for me, um, this is my fifth, fifth time already. And lucky enough, I was able to win on debut in, in 2018. And now to come back for my fifth time, it, it's quite surreal, five times in a row. And, Obviously this time is quite special as well, joining Michael, so it's, uh, it's very unique. Cool. 
for me, it's very difficult to explain why it's a special place. And also, every explanation, you know, isn't good enough to explain why Le Mans is special. You have to go there, you have to feel the atmosphere, you have to, you know, see the fans. The, 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 it's, it's one of the all-time classic races. I mean, it's just a huge place. It's high speed, you have low downforce, you have fast corners, it's dangerous, it's, it's, it's everything together. It just gives you a very good feeling uh, when you're there. Since 1923, the world's biggest car manufacturers have come to an industrial town in the center of northern France to prove their worth. These days, Le Mans is a byword for motorsporting excellence. Still, part public road, all these years in, it's not like any other race. This daunting, dangerous track. Real challenge for any driver. 330,000 fans at line. 63 cars across 17 kilometers. Test day on Sunday, two nighttime sessions. This is where it gets serious, the race at the 24 hours of Le Mans. It is, always has been, always will be a truly world-class event. Welcome to the Circuit de la Sarthe for the world's greatest motor race. On your right, please. Hello, Michael. How does it feel to be here uh, for the 24 hours? It's good. Uh, exciting, scary. Um, but you know, we've been working on this for four years, so it's nice to be here and uh, actually realize the dream. What do you mean by, by scary? Well, I think, you know, it's such an iconic track. Um, so uh, I think it's just, you know, the, the history of the place, the respect for the place. So, you know, just hope that I uh, perform well here. You're coming in, I think, a little bit of a high here. It's been going pretty well. You're looking more and more comfortable with this one. Is anybody ever ready to be rookie here? I don't, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, I, like, I, I, I feel like, you know, never fully ready, but what I'm going to keep in mind is that I've done everything I can in the, in the four years leading up to this. Felt like, we, you know, everything has been geared towards this, and we've worked really hard, and now I think, you know, it's going to be about, you know, staying super focused and relaxed at the same time. I guess that's the tricky bit. Yeah, and enjoy, actually. That's the main thing. When you enjoy, you drive well, you know? Yeah, thanks, man. Cheers, thank you. This is the biggest thing here, just trying to be smart in traffic, because they can easily fuck you, and there's been many accidents here in the past. Yeah. Making sure how close they are and if they're looking. Because yeah. as soon as they start to look, they will just send it. Yeah. And always make sure there's not another one directly behind him as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when you come back across a little bit behind him, yeah. the braking There's zone, another one there. Yeah. Angle it, get on the curb, straddle it while braking, and then you're just pointing all the way up to probably where that black car is. I love this corner on the sim. It's dead easy, but okay. Not the same here. I know. And this is second gear as well? First? It can be first, yeah. yeah. Okay. Most of the time I would say first here. Yeah, okay, cool. I, I prefer. Start around 100 and then just creep up every lap a little bit more. I don't want to be running on these things. Like no. no, no. Just try and stay off. Understood. You have to build up to this because if you're not taking them correctly yeah, the right and angle. then the car is landing in between the curb and the baguettes, then it's not so nice. It's really about unloading it enough, but at the beginning we'll just be using the face of the curb anyway. Tomorrow is just drive, drive, drive. Get the car in a good, good window already. So safe car, easy car drive, and then just laps. Because in the end, we, you won't learn a massive amount here because tomorrow, because it's so great. tracks are loose shit. Yeah. It's just getting used to the traffic, getting used to being on the track. Yeah, especially here. Don't think about it. Okay. fucking lap times yeah. tomorrow. That's for sure. <laughs> the track's gonna be slow anyway, so. Yup. No, that's it at the moment. But tomorrow, okay, it's four hours tomorrow, but. It will fly like hell, so it's, it's only 30 laps you can do maximum. But then we need to make sure we... 30 laps we can do collectively yeah, maximum. You can do more, but it's 30. You come in, we yeah, check, changes, split it, blah, 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 we check. I think the Sunday was just to, you know, get familiar with the car and get familiar with the track. 
Obviously, I've been there before for the Carrera Cup. So just trying to, you know, find a rhythm. You know, I think we had a really good plan. Uh, you know, Matt's been there, I think, five times. So Matt was just kind of our reference point. Uh, and he did a really great job at being like, okay, listen, like on the test day, we're gonna take it step by step. And, and RNA and everybody on the team, we were all on the same page. The only task was take the car out on track, be careful, and just do as many laps as possible. Michael probably was excited and also a little nervous to, to hit the track for the first time. Um, but all in all, I think everybody was positive and pretty relaxed. Since 1923, the world's biggest car manufacturers have come to an industrial town in the centre of northern France. Welcome to the Circuit de la Sarthe for the 99th anniversary running of the world's greatest motor race. What's happening, dude? Good morning. How are you? Good? Hey, what's up, man? Good. Good, and you? Pretty well? Yeah, pretty good, actually. Just out in. And in the end, we have 16 laps here. We don't have to do necessary, but at least everybody has any 10 laps there. Yeah. We have something already. And the green crew, Matt is getting ready. When it jumps in the car, just go for an out in lap. And then we push the car in, quickly check the owner. We go on slick tires, so on standby, they drop for set 101. test day track's always very green very dirty in places especially early on so you know it's just try and get laps on the belt especially for Zach and Michael for me the first few laps was just about finding my reference points I think my first lap was uh, holy shit I'm actually here I'm actually doing it Kind of understanding the sheer size of the place, you know, the length of the track. That learning process takes longer than it would on a normal track because it also takes you four minutes to get back to the corner to be like, okay, let me try this again. And already that being relaxed and kind of that mental approach was, was apparent that it was necessary um, and that this would be a focus for everybody for the whole week. The car felt safe, the car felt solid, and most importantly, it was consistent. It wasn't surprising us in any way. We always try and make it as safe as possible for Michael to give him as much confidence as quickly as possible. Just build up, exactly. but for sure. Indianapolis, 150. Uh, yeah, start at 150, creep up, and then everywhere else is, yeah. Straight to school. Michael should get ready, he goes in, next lap. We knew it's just going to be super important that he gets as many laps down as possible so that he could actually find his rhythm and start looking at details.
What's that? It's so slow, it's ridiculous. That's fine, we've got so much track time. I'll, I'll start to get the video and the data sorted and we can start to go through it because obviously we only have the, the one hour break. So I'll, I'll start to get everything prepared. Fuck man, I'm so slow, what are we gonna do? Mate, it's fine. Don't worry. It's the first morning session. Don't stress, cunt. It's all right. <laughs> you get enough laps in the weekend anyway, so it's all right. I don't know why this place freaks me out so much. I feel like I've just started driving. I mean, the it, I'm here. I there, there's nothing like it in the world. You know, for me, there's Bathurst here and Nürburgring. Everything else is, you know, normal track, but this is so different. You know, the first outing was a little sort of intimidated by the the place itself and being out there on the track again. And Matt was like, please don't look at the time, let's not worry about the time. So it was just getting comfortable with the track in the car and starting to, you know, find a rhythm on the, on the track. Just each time a little bit later on the brakes, a little bit early on the throttle compared to your previous run. The, the gap's gone from like this to this. I think it was the first good, good session for you as well. You did now, I think, 14 laps, 14, 15 laps. Big step already. And now you jump in the car for a few laps, already boom, four seconds. Up, dude. Obviously the goal wasn't about speed, it was about getting comfortable and I think we accomplished that. Everyone wants to go faster, uh, Michael included, but you know for Matt and I as far as we were concerned we had we had achieved what we wanted which was Michael getting comfortable in the car and being consistent with his lap times. We weren't seeing any big you know jumping around, get used to the track, get used to the traffic and uh, I think this was this was good. But like the flow overall, like the braking, rotation-wise, I'm, I'm not really sure, but it's all there. We just have to get this more confidence and a bit, bit more on the limit, but comfortable on the limit. But this is experience. It's all experience. Yeah, yeah. I thought the test day went really well. First session, quite slow. Then the second session, I found like four seconds. And then there was an improvement again when I went back out again the third time. So it was steady progress. I felt like it was a really solid first day. Hello everybody, welcome to the Circuit de la Sarte. We are proud to welcome you all back to Le Mans for first free practice here on this famous track. Schedule, uh, today's witness from 2 until 5, it's FP1. Qualifying from 7 until 8, and the night practice from 10 until 12. You're doing 51 laps, 36, 51 laps. Everybody's doing 2, 3 sticks for sure. Um, and the most laps for him. Matt was gonna go in, basically do a baseline check, and then we were gonna start looking for performance. Matt, box, 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 go in box. Turn five, stay on, and quickly the feedback from Matt. Yeah, uh, but for me something's a little bit different on front axle. The car is different left and right. It's a little bit sharper on the left, but for me it's definitely sharper on the left hand side and high speed. Okay, copy. A bit weird. Yeah. Coming from the test day, obviously into the race weekend, first practice session, really didn't go to plan at all. I mean, jumped in the car, um, something wasn't correct. The rear is rolling still, or we can go one step back with you on the roll bar in the rear. The rear is no problem at the moment, it's more the front axle. Uh, also, for when you when you load the front axle, uh, feels a little bit different as well, left and right. Our test day was fine in the beginning. Yeah. We do it just on the click on the rear. The rear at the roll bar, we go from 5.5 five to 4.4. Four. 
we're making small changes on the rear and the roll bar, then we go out again. We just clear the front left a bit, that's a bit too high compared to the right side, and we just see again. Yeah, coming. The error balance on the car was very, very sensitive, uh, also wasn't sucking on the straights and also there was a difference in the car turning left and right and uh, made it very hard to drive. Uh, right away we were like, okay we need to find the problem and we need to fix it because it's not something that you can sustain um, in a long race, you know, parts will break and you'll have failures. Yeah, so I think we need to change back to try the uh, old spec damper. The front dampers are the same from the test, the rear dampers are different. Okay, copy. Because something is definitely different with the car. Give us box, box, box. Car in the box, and I want the first check data. Anything uh, interesting on the radio? Yeah, the car feels a little different than the day before, but they they did change the anti roll bar in the back. Yeah. And um, well, Matt is checking some stuff, so let's see. It's totally different to what we drove, totally different. Especially exit of Porsche, when you're loaded for a long time on the right. Really strange. We changed them in the rear, we changed them to the spare ones, just to check, just to check. Okay, copy. The car was behaving so bizarrely, as how he described it, it was unpredictable and not that safe for me to drive, I guess, was, was his feeling. Totally different to the way the car was handling and feeling on the Sunday. This kind of threw our whole run plan for FP1 basically out the window because, you know, Matt's 20 minute run was now an hour trying to find the problem. <sighs> It was quite surprising because we didn't do anything. I mean, obviously, after the test day, the, the mechanics uh, checked the car again and uh, prepared it for the test day. So they take parts off the car and check it and put it back on. But we didn't do any major changes with the car. So it was very surprising that the car was behaving in, in a different way compared to the test day. <laughs> Uh, it's different, but uh, still an uh, issue. Uh, box, box. We can now do all the brakes. We check the clean the little brakes. The car is really sketchy for Porsche. I uh, can't like the left rear at all. We go back to the brakes and back to the brakes. We have to check because we, are already, we lost two and a half hours already. I think it's still not uh, right with the car. The split in the front is also moving much more, eh? like one millimeter more. Eh? But you don't touch it. I'm looking for everything now. We're just putting the soft high tempo on, just to check. Running the car, still a vibration, a high speed, but it is better on this side of it. But still, fundamentally, I think there's still an issue on the car. It could be a bit of power to drive a chance to happen. Yeah, definitely quite a bad vibration. Um, it almost feels like it's coming from the left side of the car a bit more. Is that box, is that box, box, box? We have to take the car, we take the car. Something weird, something weird. So car on the center pad, as soon as possible, please. Ah, I got a whole list of shit. It's not the same, huh? When you turn, it literally, like, as I was stopping, like when I came in here, it's like if I did, like, a nose down. Right. It moves completely different. It moves completely different, Renee. It came off and then went back on. Clean it. The session went on and we were just trying to find a problem, but we never really got to the point where we understood what the problem was in the first place. So then you pretty much, it's like a guessing game. So you change one part and you see is it changing the problem or not. 
but it never really got to a point where we actually got an understanding of what was wrong. In the end, we changed rear shock, nothing. We checked clicking, we checked diff, we checked splitter. That's right, everything's the same. They just took it apart, put it back together, and now something's not right. I think there's uh, like new uprights on the front axle and stuff like that. There's new uprights on the front axle. Okay. There's a couple other things, but they shouldn't be a lot different. Tried to, to find the issue, fix the problem. We couldn't find anything, and so we uh, we decided to end the session slightly early. Pull the car back into the garage, and uh, you know pull pull some parts off, and uh, check over the car as, as thoroughly as possible before the, the following session. If the car was vibrating like this and got worse every stint, like it has over this run, they would not last the race. This is clear, like knowing from experience. So there's something odd there. Doesn't make any fucking sense. I have no idea why. No idea. car is okay. We put Mike in for like three, four laps. Then we wait anyway what the, the others are doing and then we put him for like one shot, like two laps or three laps like this, just to see, to have something. But Michael needs to drive to get a bit of, if the car is okay for him to drive. Because if it's still the same issue, then we have different, then we have bigger issues. kind of knew at that point our, our track time was super limited. You know, I think I had done one lap in FP1 and Michael hadn't done any. We were like, hey, Qualifying probably doesn't matter that much at this point because it's a 24 hour race. There are a million things we can we can figure it out. Um, so why don't we let Michael start the session? Since we, he didn't get to drive an FP1, it was a one hour session for qualifying. You know, we decided to restrict my laps a little bit more to be able to give him as many laps as possible. Obviously we lost out a lot of time in the first session and this was the, the next opportunity to be able to get him in the car. Welcome back to the circuit at De La Sade. We get ready to go qualifying. All the cars will be out on track together. Okay, radio check please, sir. Radio check. Radio check, can you hear me? Okay, tires to the car. Tires to the car. We've seen such a busy pit Graf. lane here. Graf. Uh, radio check, four, Five, radio check. four, three, two, one. Qualifying has started. Pit exit is open. Look, you get into this, this, this fight for track position, riding on board with the number seven Toyota. Now he's found himself immediately in traffic. They're all out there together. Yes, it's a big track, but there are more cars here as well than we have in the rest of the World Championship. So um, it is a challenge for all of them to try and master. 93 crew, we go out with nothing car, used tires, and we just check the car for an out and an in lap, nothing more. He's going to do the laps he should have done in free practice in qualifying and treat it as just another regular session. It was a qualifying session, so the cars around, whether they realize it or not, that everybody's kicking up the intensity a little bit. I think this was obviously a little bit more stressful for, for Michael, especially since you know he ha wasn't able to drive in, in FP1. Michael, rear check, one, two, three, just do four, five, left, easy, no stress. unlike the remaining races in the wet, they don't have that luxury here.
side, definitely lost a bit of time there. Yeah, that green Porsche was Michael Fassbender, the Hollywood actor, on an outlap as well. Ah, so he move, yeah. wasn't yet quite up to speed on push, push, push. Slipstream and goes across the line. Tell him not to push too much, I. Going to deploy a slow zone. 